Nobody on television means more to me than our first guest, and nobody hates hearing that more either. He is a 40-foot-tall giant among men who joins two legendary musicians in Ireland just in time for St. Patrick's Day. Bono and the Edge, a sort of homecoming with Dave Letterman premieres Friday on Disney+. Plus. Please welcome David Letterman. <laughs> That was very, very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And, and James, thank you. And uh, it's just great to see your mother and father. That's delightful. Yeah, my mother and father. My mother, actually, when I was 16, for my birthday, she made me a late night with David Letterman cake. Yes, I think I've heard that story. Yeah, yeah. So this is and big for all of us. And that's where the trouble began. <laughs> uh, so I'm walking into this fabulous, uh, is, is this the old Tommy Lasorda theater? <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on either side of the wall uh, must be a hundred photos of myself and you. Yeah. yeah. And, and at first I thought, oh, well, that's, that's very nice. I, I'm touched. And the more I saw it and the more I understood what was going on, I actually was sickened. <laughs> It just, it just seemed like there's pathology at work here. And it all started with the cake on the 16th. It all started with the cake, yeah. I thought, I know how you love to see pictures of yourself, and I know how you love attention. It and was I figured very I'd... unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this facility is the nicest, for example, the, re the, the dressing room. I have never been in a dressing room that nice. Uh, if you were uh, on any of my productions, yeah. the dressing rooms were all... Uh, built as WPA projects yeah. after the Depression. But I could live back there. You're welcome to do that. I mean, it's... And well, by the way, you're totally right. The dressing rooms at the Ed Sullivan... I, I mean, everybody I meet is a family member, so I would fit right in. <laughs> because, as you know, I've always thought of you as Dave Jr. <laughs> oh, boy, don't, don't just say that, because... <laughs> Oh, every hair on my body is standing up right now. Oh, I don't want to know that. Um, I know you love Hollywood. You I are... spent the day uh, Googling symptoms. <laughs> Did you? Are you okay? That's what I, yeah, I'm sure, according, <laughs> according to the Internet, I am. Listen, yeah. uh, a good friend of mine, Okay. I think you know him, George Miller, yes. passed away, one of my very close friends. Mm -hmm. When I first came to California, uh, George uh, took me aside and he said, uh, Dave, I want you to know something. In Hollywood... Oscar is king. <laughs> and, and truer words have never been spoken. And so now you, hosting the Academy Awards uh -huh. for a third time, and this was a sensational moment for the country and the network and yourself. You know what this makes you, don't you? No. You are the prince of Hollywood. <laughs> wow. I, uh, that's exciting. Thank you. I mean, that's very kind of you to say, but if you're... Uh, but I'm not giving up Dave Jr. I'm sticking with that. <laughs> now, here's how... A lot of people ask me, Dave, how do you feel about... Uh, well, here's how I feel about award shows, generally. Okay. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, fine. But if I'm not gonna... If I'm not gonna win something, um, I, I, I don't... I'm really not that interested. <laughs> you know what I mean? It makes sense. Yes, it does make sense. Now, let's get into it. Okay, yeah, First sure. First of all, congratulations, because you resurrected this carcass. <laughs> uh, and, and the network and the Academy ought to be very grateful. Nice going for you. Well, I, get... <laughs> uh, I mean, it's... 
Undeserved, but I will take that. No, it's Thank not undeserved, because when I hosted it, and I don't even know how long ago it's been, but it was such a bomb, the, the Academy thought maybe it had been terrorists. <laughs> it's not true. It's absolutely true. It is not true. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so now, uh, uh, the cocaine bear. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Here, here was one of my moments that I truly enjoyed. Malala. Yeah. And the cocaine bear. Yeah. <laughs> And you and you have to caution Cocaine Bear, Cocaine Bear, leave Malala alone. He was, <laughs> he was sniffing Malala. Yeah. <laughs> he was sniffing Malala. He can't, he can't sniff Malala. It's not nice. Yeah. And and then I hear that oh, let's wait and find out who is in the Cocaine Bear suit. Mm hmm And then we find out, and I know for a fact that that's a lie. I, I know it wasn't Jazzy Jeff. It was. No, it wasn't. It was DJ Jazzy no, Jeff. No, it wasn't. Did you see him? You did, but it could, it could have been me. Why wasn't it me? It, it could have been you. It was me. <laughs> it definitely could it have been you. It was me. You interviewed Moala some time ago. I love watching your interviews. I really. Oh, you're very kind, James. I, I, Thank I you. really do, and I love. Do you enjoy doing? A, what we might call a serious interview more than you would, say, interviewing a Richard Simmons? I want to tell you something. Every interview I had with Richard Simmons was deadly serious. <laughs> um, you know what it is? I, uh, I just like talking to uh, people. I find that uh, I'm ignorant on most topics, and as a result, I have great curiosity. And that's why I want to talk to you about your experience hosting the Academy Awards. Okay. And I know... Oh, sure. All right. At a certain point in time, you'll get tired of this. Okay. Uh, but like parties, did you go to parties afterward? Uh, we did. We went. When oh, no, you to... say we, who, who's we? My wife and I. Mm -hmm. We had the governor's ball, which is yeah, yeah, now that's not the governor of California. Not the governor no. of California. It's the governor of showbiz. Many people think it is the governor <laughs> of California, but no, this governing board of the academy. They have a, a dinner next door, so we went to that. We stayed for well, a little while. How was the chow? Uh, I, I had a pot pie that Wolfgang Puck made, and it was pretty good. I'll tell you that. Now, see, let's find out if everybody agrees with me. Pot pie, without a doubt, 100% of the time, you burn the roof of your mouth. Are you with me? Yeah. I was good. I was okay. And um, then we went to, uh, my wife and I, we went to the Olive Garden afterwards. We had a... <laughs> A ravioli Alfredo <laughs> over there, and uh, we headed right home. That I way, had to work the next day, so there wasn't a lot of going well, out. Well, you are, me. I mean, good Lord. Uh, the, the preparation for that show is endless, and then you come right back and you do your nightly program, and this is not an easy show to do unless everybody in the audience is a family member. Then it's much easier. <laughs> uh, kind of the opposite, really. Yeah. Did you, on the night... After you hosted the Oscars, did you go back to New York and do your show the next night? No, uh, we got on a plane and flew back to New York, got on another plane and flew to London, preparing for a week of shows we were to do in, in, in London. Now, see, that's too much. Yeah, it was too much. The, yeah. whole, the whole thing was too much. Yeah, that's, that's a lot yeah. to do. Uh, they, they had to shut down. The show was so bad that the Academy <laughs> got together and they said, we can never let this happen again. <laughs> And so they shut down the film industry for one year. <laughs> they did? One year. Yeah. <laughs> they shut the whole industry for down. Everything. Ruined the, the I Oscars the that thing. followed that's, as well. That's right. It was, yeah. <laughs> um, did you have fun at the party? People must have been all over. No, there, no, right? it's terrible. It's, uh, yeah, it's terrible. It's a lot of people asking for my phone number. Yeah. <laughs> Did Meryl Streep win something? She did not. She oh, wasn't nominated this crap. year. Yeah. Was well, not nominated. No. But no. I thought she was getting, winning even without the nomination. Sometimes they just give her. <laughs> they just toss one to, onto her lawn as they drive by. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the Academy Awards van drives by? <laughs> there is a van. Here's one for you. <laughs> now, here's something that may be a little sensitive. Okay. Tom Cruise. Yeah. Where was Tom Cruise? We don't know where Tom Cruise was. We heard uh, production issues, which usually means... What does means, that mean? That's nonsense. Exactly. That's, that's not, nonsense. Not, it's very nonspecific, but we have no idea what happened. But Tom Cruise should have been there. Well, yeah. Celebrating his uh, big uh, 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 Jetpack Maverick show. <laughs> Jetpack Maverick, yeah. It seems like he should have been there, but he was not there. And like, well, like you were saying before, maybe he didn't feel like he was going to win, so he didn't want to come. Yes, but it's uh, between you and me, he should have been there, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 
We, he's the big, he's the prince of Hollywood. But it, more to the power of your success if uh, Mr. Big Shot is not there, and still the show has never been more successful. Nice going, Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you. I did it without Jeff. <laughs> David Letterman is here. We'll be right back. <laughs> So here, here we have The Edge, yeah, Bono, mm -hmm. then we have Adam, mm -hmm. then we have Larry. When you hear what their original village names were, you would understand <laughs> why they didn't run with them. Larry's was, he was known as the Jam Jar. The Jam Jar. <laughs> Adam was Mrs. Burns. <laughs> and the I, bass player is called Mrs. Burns. Yeah. Oh, hey, we got spirit. We got soul. My brothers and I are out of control. That is Bono and the Edge of Sword of Homecoming with Dave Letterman. It is on Disney Plus, premiering Friday, St. Patrick's Day. That's fun. Well, well, I don't know. Maybe that isn't fun. It's hard to tell if you have fun or not. Do you have fun? Did you have fun? Well, it's it's work, uh, and uh, luckily, usually with this kind of work, <clears throat> you, you do have fun. I, I can't speak for you tonight, but I'm having fun. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, but, but I will say, having seen this, uh, it's it turned into a film, and it's like an hour and a half long, and really, there's so much going on, but the best part is, is the music. And uh, that's really the, the reason to enjoy it. The music this. is great, and the yeah. stories are great, and just you being in Dublin, where you'd never been before. Never been to Dublin. You've, have you been to Ireland? I have not, no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to go, but I've not been. And to be there with these guys, who are really very special people, Bono and the I, I want to tell you something. Uh, there's a lot of people in rock and roll music, and a lot of people writing rock and roll music, and the definition rock and roll music, pretty broad. It's uh, along the horizon. It's endless. These guys uh, are existing and performing and creating at a, a different level. And when you spend time with them, you get to appreciate that they're not just another song that you may be hearing somewhere. This is something different. And to me, that was a, th a thrill and also intimidating. And Bono and <coughs> The Edge. Uh, <laughs> Wildly smart guys. Very smart guys. Yeah. And really... Hey, you spent time with them, yeah? I, Well, we've had them here on the show, yeah. And uh, I, I love them. I really do. I mean, this, for me, the, you and them is like, it's as if you made this specifically for me, which I know you didn't. But one of the things that I thought just... We know we did. Great. <laughs> was uh, after the show, after the concert, you, you introduced me in front of their hometown crowd, which is great. You guys go to a bar, a pub as mm -hmm. they call them, and everybody is singing along in mm -hmm. the pub. Mm -hmm. Except for one, there was one person not singing. I'll see I if you can guess who that yeah. one person I was, not singing. I was so worried about this because I knew <laughs> that you go to a pub and everybody is full of Guinness uh -huh. and sing along because yeah. you've got uh, Bono on the edge and then uh, like a half a dozen really great, talented Irish musicians performing in a way you're not going to hear them perform. Yeah. So sing along and and a lot of this, and I just, at one point, I found myself with a camera, like about here, and I thought, oh, <laughs> So I just started doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever sing along? Do you ever sing? No, uh, it no? was uh, something, I can remember going to church with my parents, and, uh, you know, anybody go to church? Yeah, yeah, sure. A lot of it is hymns, and, uh, I would fake singing, and, and periodically, uh, a woman uh, my mother's age, not my mother, but a woman my mother's age, who should have known better and should have minded her own business, <laughs> would say, well, you're not singing at all, young man. And, and then we would, we would have to cut her tires. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't come uh, naturally, but God, what an yeah. experience that night was. What about sitting there with Bono and with Edge, and they're, they've written a song for you. Oh, my God. About you, yeah. somewhat. Although I read the lyrics, it doesn't seem to really be about you, I'm going to be honest. But they're Th singing... Thank you for being honest. <laughs> they're, they're singing to you, and I can't imagine any situation... Has where... anyone ever written a song for you? Um, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah. nor I. Yeah. And we're in this uh, place called the March Library, it's like from the 16th century, and there's there's books the size of this chair, and it's huge. It's uh, well regarded academically, and it's freezing. It was very very cold in there, 
So the Edge and Bonnie, and they come in, and Edge says, you know, I was up till 3 o'clock last night writing this song. And I thought, oh, I'll be darn, hoping that that'd be the end of it. <laughs> they start getting out sheet music, and the, the band, everybody's got an arrangement, and, and they're, now they're singing this song that the night before they have created. And I'm thinking two things. Oh, I hope this goes away. <laughs> and, and secondly, I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is not bad. So it turns out to be a real deal. And if you're going to have... So and, and these guys aren't kidding around writing songs. Do you think if you had people sing to you more, you would become more comfortable with it? Like yes, I do, Jimmy, and I'm going to pursue little... that. <laughs> I've got my guitar here. and I... <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you when people sing to you? Hate it. Don't yeah. like it at all. Yeah. It doesn't matter how nice it is or how beautiful it sounds. Yep. It just makes me want to crawl under the That's table. That's right. Same with me. And I don't like it when people uh, sort of uh, coerce you into... Everybody, I don't. You yeah, know, I don't, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not everybody. No, no thank Have you. you looked into this? Why you are unable to enjoy moments like that? Have you? Explored? Do I seem like I have any self-introspection? <laughs> yes. No, I'm not yes, looked into any, not looked into anything, frankly. <laughs> Life's too short, isn't when it? When you're here in uh, in Hollywood, as we call it, mm -hmm. do you ever get the urge to drive down the block to the comedy store? where you worked for so long as a young man, where you, you did stand-up with your friends and get up on stage there and do a set? No, no. No, uh, not at all. I, w I was never really a stand-up comedian. I, I did stand-up comedy because I knew to be on The Tonight Show, which was my reason for leaving Indiana, was to you'd have to do some stand-up comedy because they're not going to put you on because, hey, I understand this kid just moved from Indiana. Here he is. <laughs> uh, so that's all I could do. And, and when I would go on the road, I, did you, you have done? Have Never. Not done? Yeah. I found that every afternoon you'd be in any town, any college town in the United States. I remember one time they'd always send a guy, the president of the student body, to pick you up at the airport. Mm -hmm. So you fly all night and you're half grog to get off the plane. The guy picks you up and he wants, he wants to talk and I don't want to talk. And I'm in the back seat and I, and I look. <laughs> in the rear view mirror, and I see the guy driving. Yeah, because he's been up drinking all night, and he, he gets to go pick up <laughs> <hole>. um, <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Uh, so I, I asked him to pull over, and I had to drive myself <laughs> from the airport to the gig. So a little of that goes he a long way. Him. Well, it is uh, a thrill to have you here. Well, I'm listen, not gonna... Thank yeah. you very much. I know uh, I had to ask to be on this show, and, <laughs> that's, and that's impolite. <laughs> no, it's and not. This man, uh, in his lifetime, in his career that I've known him, has been so kind to me, and the people who work with him are equally kind, if not perhaps a little more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I love being on TV, so well, thank you very much. Hey, you're it's welcome every fun. single night, Dave. Dave Lemon, everybody. Bottom of the Edge, the show of Homecoming. Friday on Disney Plus. We'll be back.